Dad, what game are we playing together? We are playing Confusion, Espionage and Deception in the Cold War. And this is another reprint by Stronghold Games, a game that was out before and they remade it. And I tell you, they did a fantastic job at it. Do you like Confusion? I do like Confusion. Um, there's, it, it's a deduction game where you've got to figure out a few things. Uh, and it's a little bit of a strategy, and there's some twists to it that make it really unique. So I think it's cool. It does have some drawbacks I'll talk about in a minute, but I think overall it's a good game. What's the objective? Well, the objective is, is to get this top secret briefcase to the other side of the board. So you can see I'd be playing U.S. versus Russia. And I'm trying to move my spies to get this briefcase to their last row. How do you play? Well, the tr that's where the twist is in this game. The tricky part is with my spies over here, so I'm these white pieces, I don't know how they can move. So I want them to move the briefcase, but I don't know how they move. So I have to ask if they can move certain directions and the opponent is going to tell me whether they can or can't. So is it hard? Uh, it can be because there's a little bit of frustration, but the cool thing is is you get a cool chart that may look daunting at first, but it can tell you where they move. So for example, I'll show you an example here in the front. I could say, if it's on my turn, I could say, I want to move E diagonally two spaces. And then my opponent would say, yes or no. So what do you say, Brooke? Can I move that one diagonally two spaces forward? Yeah. Awesome. So then on my next turn I could say, okay, I want to move C forward three spaces. Can I? You can or cannot. Oh, you must be tricking me out. I'll get to that in a minute. No, you can't. <laughs> Alright, but that's the trick of it. And I have to then make note on my board to say, okay, E, he can move diagonally two spaces. Well, it's organized really nice, so I can say all of these, all these forward spaces, diagonally two spaces, then I can know what he is or isn't. So, for example, if I can't move any one of these diagonally two spaces, then voila. So this tells how many spaces it can move and in which directions. So I already have narrowed it down to E can be one of those spaces. So it's a real cool deduction game in that way. And the other player is doing the same thing, trying to get on that briefcase and move it. So would E always be diagonally two spaces? Yeah, so next time I play the game, no, what's so cool, maybe you can get this. You can see this, all of these pieces all come out. So the center section is going to be different. At the start of the game, all these are going to be face down. You'll mix them up, and your opponent is randomly going to place or position them in their respective unit. So isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Those all fit in different places. So you can't see what... So every time you play, these are going to be different pieces in there. The other thing that's cool is on the back side, it's got two sides. The back side is two in any direction. This happens if there's a piece that has a crown on it, they're promotable pieces. If I get them to the other side of the board, that piece will turn around to that side. And now this piece can move two directions in any, well, two spaces in any direction. So that's pretty cool to get them to the other side of the board and do that. But then there's also another tricky piece, and that is the question mark. Now the question mark is a pretty cool piece because that's the double agent and your opponent is going to choose whether it can or can't make a move. So if I try to move it a certain number of spaces, my opponent can say yes. So I could say move it forward two, I'll say yes. And then I will think he can move forward two. Next time I'll say, can, I'm gonna move him forward two. And my opponent no. will say, no. It's like, oh, he can't? Well, now I know he's the double agent. So on my turn, I can actually choose to remove what I think is the double agent. I don't ever get to look at it, so I might have removed the wrong piece, but. It can also come into your advantage when you're moving things around to get them to think that this piece is going to defeat them. As they move in with the briefcase, and I think he can move diagonal, now all of a sudden I go to move him to eliminate that spy, and you'll say, nope, he can't move that way. And before I know it, you've moved in, taken my guy out, and then you move in for the win, taking guys out all along the way. So it's kind of tricky that way. That's what a double agent does. But, even with all that said, there is one element of the game that I, that I kind of think docks it. I would rate it higher, but it docks it a little bit because we've had a number of games where the game is 
finished in under five minutes. And those are some lucky pieces. So for example, down here, this piece A, and one of the moves I always like to start with because this is kind of the way it looks out. If I can move him diagonally two spaces, in two moves he's on top of the briefcase, and immediately he can be moving in. And if he doesn't have any pieces to block, or he hasn't figured out his pieces in three moves, I can just be moving in, take out his piece, and win the game. And so I actually think that's kind of one of the brokens, because if these two pieces can move in on that briefcase in your first moves, then the game is done in under five minutes and the other opponent hasn't really done anything. So we've had a number of games where that's the case, where the game just ends really quick. But if that's not the case, and someone doesn't find out a movement that quick, uh, then the game can last a little longer, and it's, it's a pretty good game. So, I don't know. That's, that's the only drawback that we've come across, is sometimes it just seems a letdown because it goes just too quick based on the luck of how those randomly done. So one of the things we think would be really cool, we haven't done it yet, and the rules don't even have it as a variant, is to actually, uh, rather than randomize what you put in, is to strategically place your opponent's pieces in which ones you want them to go in. And I think that might add for a little bit of intrigue. What would you rate confusion? Uh, well, I'm going to rate it three and a half meeples. Uh, I would rate it higher again because of that every other game or so or every few games or maybe one that goes too quick. But we just set it up, play again. So overall, I think it's a, it's a really good game because these components are, are fantastic. So three and a half.